Okay, construction one, Mulligan's bench build. So I'm setting up and doing some layout here that I want to instruct via camera. But prior to that, I wanna do a walk around and show you what we've got set up for saws. So our portable Milwaukee, we have that set up for only 40 degree angles. I've locked that out at 40 degrees. I'm gonna ask that you leave it at that. And really the only cut we're gonna make on this for now is this 40 degree cut for our horizontals. On the 50 degree side, we're going to make that right here on this Makita. That is locked out at 50 degrees. For our uh, cross, for our leg benches, we've got this saw locked out at 30 degrees right now and marked accordingly. So I want you to leave this at 30. And then our compound miter saw with the big work table here works great for when we're bringing in these big 16 foot boards and we're going to initially cut them exactly in half and then break them down into our bench tops, our four footers. This is only for perpendicular cross cuts at 90 degrees. Leave this saw locked out as well. I've checked all these to be plumb and vertical. So we're set up to do some production. And speaking of which, let's talk about how to put these legs together. When I am looking for material, uh, this was a one that had already been cut and extra. I need a set of these to go together. I can go out to the yard and grab a 16 footer, which I'm going to first ask that you look at this rack up here. This would be our usable project storage. We've got treated lumber marked up here. So if we've got two by eight profile up here, which we do, this would be a two by eight right here. I want you to pull from that. If it is not labeled on the end, if there's nothing written on the end of the board, that means it's fair game. We're always gonna put our names on the ends of the boards if we have cut them to length and claimed them. I found a piece up there that was fairly rough. It's got some, oh, live tree edge issues, right? So it would happen that play a little bit of Tetris here we can see that if we lay this out, we'll need to get our 30 degree cut on the end, but we can just get away with cutting this here and making something valuable out of this piece. It's probably not good for a bench top. It's actually a little bit short, so I can lay this out and cut this for a bench top. Okay, so I've already got one piece that is a known good, so I can use that as a template, flush my edges on, all, on both sides, and then mark where my 30 degree cuts need to be. I'm gonna bring this over to my 30 degree saw. <laughs> That's cool the saw on the camera there. Spin move, nice spin move. Yeah. And I'm gonna cut this joint first because if I cut here, well, and I can do this one too as long as I get my support set up out here like they need to be. I'll come down on my level coolest. So I'm looking right here, there's a gap, and that's a problem. If I flip this down, now it doesn't sit level on the table. It really needs to be supported about right there. So I have to adjust these, and normally I will do this prior to class so that this holds the material exactly where it should. Right there is good, okay. And we'll make this end cut first. Remember on the miter saw, always starting all the way out. I'm just gonna take the line, come over here, Nick. Looking on this side. I just wanna take that line and no more if possible. Make sure we're pinned in, hold tight here. is dumpster material. Now, that doesn't line up with our line, which concerns me. Uh, either the saw is off or the other piece is off. We'll slide down, make a cut here. We may have to make some adjustment. It is locked in at 30 degrees right now, so I feel like that's a, where it should be. Good. was long enough we could just flop this angle which it is and we can make another leg out of it we don't need to recut that joint right we just use this mark it and flush there mark it and then i'd make another one out of it So 
So these two are going to match, I'm sure of that. But I think the issue is this problem is not cut at the same angle. So match the cut. No, they're actually perfect. So they will work. Uh, this on the end here, that'll play as far as not going all the way out to the tip there. But now we can go over our layout of closing these and getting these ready to screw together, okay? So next steps for that. Uh, you can pause one. And we're live. Okay, so we're gonna continue on with bench build and we've got our horizontals cut for the bench. I've got an assembled set here so you can kind of get an idea, okay, what do these look like? And what I have done is drawn on the table. Yes, drawn on the table. We're allowing that. I've got a line that is parallel with this edge, 17 and a half inches up. I use this, which is a drywall key square to do it. You could also use a framing square. Just come off the edge. Make sure you are, abs make absolutely sure you're flush here. Draw a line, but we'll draw these out on the table and they are gonna be one of our guidelines for how high these need to be. So I'm gonna set this aside. These are done. We'll bring these in. We're going to oppose these. Remember when we build a set of these, one leg set has to go this way and the other leg set has to go this way. They have to be a matched pair or a, an opposing pair, I guess. Actually, they would not be the same build. So it does matter. You just have to know that first time I do it, I'm gonna arrange the right over the left, and the second time I'm going to do the left over the right. Next things I'm looking for. I want to be parallel with the bottom of the table with my edges, bottom edges, so I'm going to start to line these up, and then also parallel with the top. And the other number that I'm looking for is 15 and a quarter inches from point to point here. So if I pull a tape hook on, right now I'm at 15 and a half, so I'm really close. Slide these together a little bit more. Three eighths. Okay, I've got 15 and a quarter there. Uh, I want to take a straight edge and go across the bottom of these and see how straight they are sitting. Okay, they're not perfect, so I need to make an adjustment to that. And then also check my width again. And I'm gonna keep guessing and checking here until I get these good. 15 and a quarter is good here. And check across the top angle as well and that is really flat if i look at it even though i'm like going downhill really flat if i've got it where i want it 15 and a quarter wide 17 and a half tall then i'm going to mark it up by scribing lines here here and i want to make uh where it would be best for you to see probably on this side i want to make some matching lines here Okay, kind of mark it up all over the place. I've got these lines in here as well. And then I'm gonna slide it down to the end of the table and clamp it. Um, prior to that, like, okay, I can mess this up and I should be able to put it back together, right? Uh, mark it up on this side a little bit more too, just for my confidence sake. We didn't make some center marks down the middle. Now the make it look easy version of that is find my three and three quarter, because that's the middle of seven and a half, and I'm gonna draw a center line down that board, sliding as a scribe. And this speed score is pretty sweet because it's got the slots, right? You can do that, but you could also just mark three and three quarter, mark three and three quarter, and use a straight edge. Same thing on this board. I want to mark this one up. It's already been marked up. I got a center line here. I'm going to bring these over to the edge of the table, and I'm going to realign them. I've got to use all my marks that I created. There's one right there. Make sure I'm straight there. And then other side looks good too. Oh, I'm working over a stool. Oh, you were standing on it. Right. Notice the rest of the stools are tucked in around the table. It's very nice. We get our friend the quick grip clamp and we wanna go on this bar right here, the steel bar and close to the center where we can. Oh, I just bumped it. Get it to line back up here completely. Good, squeeze that up. And then we've got to make some marks on here where our, where our lines cross. So I'm going to transfer this bottom center line up onto the top board. And this is just lining up with my dominant eye, right? I'm looking through this and maybe you can see that line down there. Then I'm gonna make a crossing line here. 
and I want to go out each way two and a half. I don't know if you can see it well on the ruler, but from the eight inch, I go from the eight inch mark here, I'm going to go back to five and a half. There's one. Eight plus two and a half would be ten and a half. And then same thing this way. We'll go from the eight again. Five and a half, ten and a half. All right, that's where my four screws need to go. Now, generally we're pre-drilling through the top board and drilling into the bottom board. So pre-drills, 730 seconds. Our big screws are going to be right here on the side board. And these are our 5 16 lag construction screws. Okay, pre-drill through the top one here. And a little bit into the bottom isn't gonna hurt. What I, what I can feel right now, it's gonna be an issue, is there is a gap on the outside. Uh, if you come over here, Ryan, this would be the best place to see it. Take a look at right here. There's, there's a cup to the board. It's one of our warps, right? And there's a gap right here. Now this screw should help, this screw will help pull it down. But I'm gonna install the screws where it's tight first, and then I will maybe even loosen the clamp so that it can pull it down flat. So this one can go in. When I get close, I'm just gonna turn it by hand until I get some nice compression on that washer head. That looks good. A couple more. Turn it by hand. Like it. Good. Now we'll see with taking that clamp off. It's not going to move anywhere with three. We'll see if that pulls down at all. It may not because this one might hold it out, but we'll see. Okay, that pulled it in pretty nice. Uh, what I notice with these three inch screws, because we have two inch and a half boards, flip it over and feel, look very closely, but these tips of the screws are sticking out. Okay, our solution for that, it's awesome that we've got that screw all the way through. We're gonna take a four inch angle grinder, metals 101 or metals class, and we're gonna hit these screw tips. Now it'll shoot the sparks this way or If we could get two and three quarter inch lag screws, we would, but we can't, we got three inches, so this is what we've got. We've now finished one of our legs. We want to make sure when we do the next set that we've got an opposing pair, like this right here would be our, our same set, right? They are not reversible. This would be a same set. We would have to, we did this wrong. We'd ultimately have to take these apart if we were trying to use these as a pair. I could have maybe looked at that in advance. Uh, yeah, we could go there. Okay. Opposing set. So this would be opposing set here or opposites. And that's the way we're going to build them. Okay. Uh, so we've got our braces will go in here and that'll be our next steps for assembly. Okay, leg assembly. When we've got this done, we've got our table or our bench tops cut to length. Then we'll talk about assembly for next steps. Yes. So Wait, for up here, Derek. Okay, there we go. Uh, we need to talk about dimensional lumber and sheet goods in our shop. So we've got our compound miter saw here in this station. And first of all, I'll point out, normally clean firewood needs to go on the right. Clean firewood is going to be anything that is pine, not treated. This is cedar tone treated, so it's been pressure injected, which means it's got chemicals that we don't want to burn in a fire. That goes on the dumpster side. Additionally, anything with paint on it would go on the dumpster side. So we have to sort right away and nobody is above sorting. Let me repeat that. Nobody is above sorting. So when you create waste, you need to decide where does this go, okay? If it's a big piece or you have a lot, it needs to go in the outside dumpster right away. Otherwise, if you're gonna rip cedar tone treated material, which this is, it goes on the dumpster side, okay? Anything shorter than one foot typically goes to firewood or the dumpster. So this piece, now it's really close, it's almost a foot long, 
but because of these bad edges, it's probably a candidate for the burn box or firewood as well. Now our storage system interior wise, active projects, we try and put material up here where there's a drop or a leftover that's longer than four feet. So we've got a two by eight up here, a two by four right now that are available. And our general rule is if there's no label on the end of it, if nobody wrote their initials on the end, then it's a candidate, okay? If you took a Sharpie and put your name on it, then you've said, hey, I've got this cut to length already, I'm storing it up here. If it's shorter than four feet, then we can put it underneath this table. And if you come down on my level, this is a little random right now, but we try and hold on to, maybe it's just uh, stickering material or shim that we would keep wood up off the ground with. That's what this was for. Banding strap in here was, it was when they shipped it. Uh, maybe it's usable yet, like this two by six. Uh, and we do organize it, but it just kind of gets thrown back together. A piece like this, what do you think? Probably not usable. That's dumpster, okay? Uh, these strips, well, they're kind of handy, nice thickness. So again, keep them around. Sometimes we just go to this and say, is there material in here that we can use for a given project? Okay, um, additionally, sheet storage. This is where we're keeping all of our sheet goods. So we've got our plywoods, our OSBs, our plastics, anything vertically that we can store in this rack. Try to keep organized on this. If it gets small enough, something like uh, at the end of the year we go, all right, do we want to keep this or not? If it is a decision to dumpster it, then where does it go? Follow me. So our outdoor dumpster in the yard, we just got it emptied of uh, this material for packaging. We get folded up and thrown in the dumpster and I'll have uh, teacher's aides or I might ask one of you to do that. Our lumber piles come 16 foot length, right? So we can't really store these inside and with the treated material, it actually does better, prevents uh, warping if we keep it outside in a more, a higher moisture environment. So we've got a pile in there of two by eights. We've got two by fours and two by tens here. We're gonna make this into a whole bunch of outdoor furniture, okay? So uh, this is where this material goes. Uh, the fence, if it's not unlocked, needs a key. I may have to give you the key so that you can key into it. Uh -huh. And then we can get at the dumpster. And anything that goes in here goes to the landfill. Okay, beyond that, uh, we can talk about bringing a big board in and cutting it. So if we have to bring a 16 footer in, well, we don't have anybody to get the door. This is tough. You want to get the door? Yeah. Camera guy? I'm going to get it on this side of me. So I want the board to be on the saw side. Come on in, I'm going to tell you a few things right away, which you got to know. Push this up to the back backstop here or our fence and if it's not touching right here then we need to give it a flip so right now it's pushed out a little bit let's just flip it and see how it looks the other way i would say it's better this way so that means the saw there's no gap and the saw is not going to bind your pitch the last thing is this board is more than 16 feet long even though it's a 16 footer we saw this in the video come down on this end We've got about 16 foot, I would say one and a quarter inches. So we're gonna split that in half. We're gonna go back to the eight foot mark. And we're gonna cut this at eight foot and five eighths of an inch. We're gonna split it in half right there. And that's gonna give us two equal boards that are both over eight feet. That's usually our first step when we're dealing with 16 foot boards. We're gonna break them down into a more manageable length and cut them directly in half. And then we're always gonna pull from this cut line Safety third. From this point on, we're always going to pull from this cut line to measure and mark. Because we've got a clean cut, we want to work all the way towards that factory end that's not as nice. See. Are you recording? Okay, good. Bench assembly, next steps. So we just saw a video on how to put our cross braces together. And once we have a set of those made, and I had mentioned that they should be opposing sets, right? So these insides, they're the same angle, but they're both set to the inside. It doesn't really matter. Honestly, if you did them wrong, I think it would still work out fine, but we're gonna try and do opposing sets here uh, so that our braces are on the same side. And we'll get to that in a little bit. 
bit. Let's talk about how we got to this point. So I use the table as a tool, and these tables are square, level, flat, and we can use that to help build our bench. So I've got my X's set up here. Uh, the tips are flush to the end of the bench, here and here. On this side, I've got, I am flush with the outside edge here, and I've got an even offset. So my step back here is an inch and a half, which it should be, but I can see that inch and a half all the way there and kind of get these lined up and they stand up on their own. So I'm using the bench as a squaring tool. Uh, next steps, I'm gonna throw my tops up on here, but before that, I marked out everything on the tops. So this is a lot of information. I've got offset here for my two legs that matches the offset down below. Uh, this one is six inches to the outside edge, four and a half to the inside edge. The leg on the back side is four and a half to the outside edge where they meet or cross, okay? So they would be like this. And then three inches to the to this edge. Maybe I said that wrong. Four and a half to the inside edge or where the two boards cross and three. And then I've also got layouts for my screw holes here. So I'm up an inch and a half or in an inch and a half from the edge of the board on both of the outside screws. Those are inch and a half. And this one is centered. And I'm centered down the middle of this board. So if you look at it from this angle right here, I'm actually missing one line that would help. Nice to have these lines drawn on the end as well. So I know where to center this board on, right? And then my screws, if I'm in four and a half here to six, then I'm gonna be five and a quarter for my screw holes. And I know that those screws are going right down the center and hitting there, okay? So all this layout is done before because it's gonna help me to line things up. If I look on this side as well, or if you look on this side, take a look at the back side, and I can see those marks here where uh, I should have my leg braces lining up. And that way my legs aren't twisted in here or going at some odd angle. I can see that visually from another angles. You might notice this tip sticking out. Our spacing on these benches is gonna be the width of a carpenter's pencil or a quarter inch. So we're gonna put a carpenter's pencil in. After we screw our first one down flush, carpenter's pencil, pull this tight. This will get sanded off or trimmed. There's gonna be some variation on that. As long as it's not too crazy, we'll just uh, trim that off and sand it, not a big deal. Other things we wanna check when we throw our tops on. We wanna make sure that this edge is flush. So between the two boards, if I put the heel of my speed square on there, I am flush before I screw these down. As long as I've got this one lined up, then I wanna check this board to be flush and spaced correctly before I run that next screw in. Screws are pulled down a 32nd of an inch below the surface, just countersunk, not too far. Uh, okay, I'll come down to the other edge and I'll maybe do this layout with you. I'll go as fast as I can here. So we're gonna find the center of the board first here, five and a quarter. If I wanna be fancy with my speed square on this speed square, I can use it as a slide, that's so nice. And then I want to be an inch and a half up. I want to be centered, which is normally going to be three and five eighths. This is three and a half, three and five eighths, three and five eighths, three and a quarter. And then I'll flip it to go an inch and a half in here as well. Those are my three screw holes for this side. I'll do the same layout over here. As far as installing the screws go, three inch construction screws, T25. Um, take a look at this once. I pre-drilled these because of the knot here, and it, not ideal, no pun intended, that this came out right in the middle of a knot. It just did for the bottom brace, and so that was not ideal, and I didn't want it to split, so I just ran a pre-drill through those. Normally, we don't have to pre-drill with these construction screws. We're just gonna run these in. So I'm gonna line up on, I'll go centered first. Bop the back of the drill once. Oh, I got a bad screw here. Take a look at that head. So it got clipped by the joiner. So that one's going in the garbage in my pouch pocket for now. Throttling the drill here. See that pull down and then I can turn it till it's tight and good. And I'm actually out of three inch screws. So let's come over to the cabinet here. Pay attention to a little detail. These are, these are two and a halves here, two and a half by nines. These are two inch by number eight screws, so they're smaller. These are our big leg construction screws. These are our three inch screws here. So I'll grab a small handful, not too many. Remember that at the end of the day, if you've got extra screws, they need to go back into the correct bin. Please don't mix them up. It makes life harder for everybody. 
we'll get this bench seat screwed off. I'm gonna put this one in because I got this clamp here. Clamp's not necessary, but it's kind of nice. It slips in there and actually acts as a spacer. So, up to you if you want to run the clamp or not. I'll take that off for now and get it out of the way. This last one, hopefully we pull down a little bit here and eliminate some of that gap. Very nice, yes. Okay, uh, these three are screwed down. I had prior to that checked for flush all the way around. Let's talk about how to put this brace in next. And this involves a little more layout. So these horizontal braces, this is our 40 degree angle. This is our 50 degree angle. We have, sorry, we have saws set up for both of those. We're gonna put the 40 degree side against the leg. And what I found that works, uh, just like how can we arrange this? If we put this right here, the problem is on the back side, we have to go through two layers of thickness in order to get screws in there. That doesn't work out well. So we can put it on our one layer here and I can kind of nest it in where it contacts this other board, the other leg and where it's flush here and where that all seats and fits good, then I'm gonna start making some marks, okay? And how do I figure out where this thing is supposed to be? Okay, the way I did it, I put my speed square here and I look at where do I want my screws to come through? Uh, I gotta be up here, that should be good. Um, take a look down at this angle, Ryan. So I wanna be flush up on the top here, make sure I'm contacting. Let's just throw it in and make sure they're the same. Oh yeah, they're the same, so that's good. So I wanna reproduce this over here, right? So I'm gonna be flush here, I'm gonna slide up until I'm contacting here, here, and I'm flush over here as well. And then if I slide my speed square in, like what would be an ideal height for these screws to come in from the backside? Probably five inches would be a minimum here high because otherwise the screw would run out and it would stick out here and my next point probably just top of the speed square so like seven inches would be good so my two heights for screws are going to be five and seven from the back side that's good spacing how far in do i know on this side to make that well, i'm going to take a measurement here if i go from the edge of my table which i know i'm, I'm here and i can kind of transfer that down and here's another way to do this Put this along here i'm losing a little bit but if i push off here i know that the edge of my board is about six and five eighths i'm going to add three quarters of an inch to get to the center so six and five eighths plus three quarter seven and three eighths over up five and up seven those are my two locations for my holes so let's mark that out on the back side Hook on here, seven and three eighths. That's gonna be the center line of where I need those holes and then I want up five and up seven. So I can set this right on the ledge. Make sure I'm on the ledge and vertical. There's my center line, five and seven. That's where my two screws are gonna go. Now if I have the confidence, I can just run these screws in part of the way and they're gonna show up in the right place on the other side. working that team of two really helps because somebody needs to hold that brace piece. Now, safety wise, you wouldn't want your hand right here pushing against this if a screw is coming through, but you should be able to brace this in place. The last thing I want to look at, and I did this too, is I want to make sure that this piece is sitting plumb or vertical so that it's not twisted like this in extreme situation. So I can put my speed square in just as a guide as well. Kind of put all of these pieces together. Make sure I'm up tight underneath here. That's good. And make sure I'm plumb here. And now visually, everything's looking like it's lining up. Grab my drill. And if somebody else is helping you, they can hold that from the backside, but I've got a pretty good hold on it here. That first screw is gonna to wanna to push away. Reach 
check it to make sure it's plumb. We're good up here. Plumb right here, come in over on this angle once. Plumb right here, so we're vertical, that's nice. And we got a really good gap, a really good fit here, no gap. Once we got that first screw in and all, and all is well, then we can run that second screw in. And we got that in place. The last part of this is marking out our holes on top. So what I did for this, um, if you shoot through this way, I just looked like this, and I can see in these gaps where this is. Um, is there a better way to do this? I don't know, maybe right there and right there is the two outsides of my boards. Same thing here, I'm gonna measure in, so come from this angle now. The inside edge, or the outside edge of my board is at three and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna add three quarters of an inch to that to get to the center, which would be four. Use my speed square for that. I can flip it so you can read it. Oh, that's still backwards. Four is my center here. And four here. Now I need to come in each way because those are the two ends of the board. So I'm just gonna go two inches apart between each of these. Let's do it this way. That's the length of my board. I'm gonna go at two inch, inch and a half and four inches because of the heel centered at four. Those are gonna hit. For this first one, I'll go underneath here and push up so there's no gap. Some of the, this is called blind installation and takes a little bit of confidence to know my screws are going in the right place. I'll make sure my screw doesn't stick through and we're good there. I can maybe pull that one up a little tighter, but I don't think it's going to close that gap at all. What these triangles do though is they make it incredibly strong, uh, incredibly rigid. So now we just got to go through installing the backboard, laying out screw holes there, screwing that down and we have a functional bench. Then we'll talk about finally wrapping the perimeter with this two by four band, how we're gonna go about doing that. And, uh, oh, a few other things I wanna point out. If you find uh, staples or anything in the wood, get a pliers and pull these out, okay? These are not good. We wouldn't wanna send it down the line like this. Uh, sometimes they have to staple on identification material on the outside, labels and tags and stuff. So clean it up that way and if you find wood that is not good it's got sections that are bad we're gonna have to try and work around it the best we can so we need to and on this case we're probably going to it's a consumed knot it's inside the board it's not ideal but the other side take a look at this this would have been the top side and there's a pretty good chunk out of the corner so I this was a better side board but I flipped it because I wanted to be able to hide that okay so we'll hide that with our band going around Okay, scene.